Ollie, you're welcome to be seated. It's good to see you. And um, I want to jump into the Word of the Lord this morning. I want to speak to you about the Holy Spirit. And there's much that I, I can share. I, but I felt as I was standing here on, on the stage, the Lord just took me to one or two very simple scriptures. And I, I want you just to, to listen. And then I'm going to explain. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 6 and verse number 15. There's a word there that I want us just to catch. The Bible says, which God will bring about in His own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. I want us to know that God is a ruler. I'll say it again. God is a ruler. And when God made the earth, this ball that you and I find ourselves on, He made it because He wanted to extend His dominion or His rulership onto a planet. In other words, God was already ruling. He was already reigning the universe and He is still presently doing so. Currently, as far as I know, there's about 500 uh, galaxies or 500, yeah, 500 galaxies, I think if I remember not correctly. Um, that he has made or that we know about and we're still finding out more and more as we go. The point is this massive, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient God made the earth. And then God put man onto this earth and he placed man here because he wanted through man to take dominion onto the planet. That's why he says in the book of Genesis, chapter number one, he says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion. I want you to see it very clearly. The Lord says, let us, speaking about the Trinity, make man and let them have dominion. You have been made to have dominion. You have been made to rule and reign with God. Are you there? You have not been made to be dominated. You have made, not been made to be ruled over. You have been made to be the ruler. You have been made to have the dominion. And the Bible says that in John chapter number 14 and verse number 16, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And then he says this, he says, and no one can come to the Father except through me. In other words, if you can imagine it just for a moment, well, let me quote the other scriptures while well. John chapter number six, verse number 44, where Jesus says, and nobody can come to the Father unless he is drawn to him. Unless he's drawn. Let me just read the scripture and then I'll explain. Um, and I'll do it visually that you can understand. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So what do we find? We find that the Father has sent the Son. The Son has given us the Spirit of the Lord. Actually, the Spirit of the Lord comes because of the Son. So it's the Father that sends the Son, and it's the Son through which we have received Him, by which we have been given the Holy Spirit. Right? Everybody with me? So the Holy Spirit takes us towards the Son and the Son takes us towards the Father. Are you okay? Listen to me carefully. Nobody can come to the Father unless the Son takes him to the Father. Nobody can come unto Jesus unless the Spirit brings the person to Jesus. Because there isn't another Savior than Jesus. There's nobody else. Nobody can save you except Jesus. And Jesus needs the Spirit of the Lord to bring you to Him. And then based on who He is, He brings you to the Father. The Father introduces you to His family. And then He gives you or He says, the Spirit may come. And then the Spirit of the Lord comes and lives inside of you. That's why in John chapter number 14 and verse number 26 and verse number 16 
and in John 16, 13, it speaks about the guide, guiding of the Holy Spirit, you'll find that Jesus says, and I will pray the Father that He will give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm going to ask the Father to give you the this, this Spirit based on me. Please note that the Spirit of the Lord descends from the Father and visits or stays permanently in the people of Jesus or the Jesus people. Do you understand? Now let's go all the way back to creation. If you understand creation, you'll understand this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and God says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Therefore, God makes man in his image and in his likeness and out of that comes Adam. Adam gets formed and gets made by the earth or by the ground. And God breathes into Adam the breath of life. Are you there? So God's original plan was that through this first man, Adam, the one that is made out of the ground, that through this Adam, he will have dominion over the earth and Adam and Eve will multiply, they will cultivate, they will um, dominate, and they will basically let, let the rest of the earth look like Eden. A place where God can dwell with His people. Are you okay? Because Eden is not a physical location. Eden was a place of His presence. Everybody still with me? Okay, so again, God makes man in His image and in His likeness. And then out of the Lord comes, or the Lord then makes Adam, He breathes into him the breath of life. Adam becomes a life breathing soul. Then God sees it's not good for Adam to be alone. He takes woman out of Adam, or out of his rib. Please just see the massive difference here. I don't want to teach about that, but I just want you to see it. Is that man was, was made out of the ground and Eve was made out of man. Big difference between how God made the two. Are you okay? Let's go a little bit further. So then Adam... And Eve, they sinned against God. And because they sinned against God, the Holy Spirit gets recalled. Come on, Ben Paul, don't be this quiet. Are you okay? Say amen or something. Okay? So because Adam and Eve sins against the Lord, the Lord recalls His Spirit. Now, God cannot have dominion over the earth like He wanted to originally. He needs another Adam or a last Adam to come that will be in obedience to Him so that through this last Adam, He can restore the original plan. What was the original plan? Let them have dominion. Let them rule over the earth. Are you okay? Then Jesus Christ comes as the last Adam he is also formed out of the ground. And the Bible tells us that the Spirit of the Lord descends upon Him and remains with Him. And as soon as the Spirit of the Lord comes upon Him and remains with Him, the first thing He says as a king, because He didn't come as a prince, He comes as a king. The first thing He says is repent. Why does He say repent? Re is a prefix. It means Formerly, or re, it means former. Paint means think again. You put the two words together, repent, it means think again. Then later on in Scripture, in the book of John, he says to his disciples, receive the Holy Spirit. Re against the word former. The word sieve means to own it again, possess it again, have it again. What? Have what again? The dominion that you lost here. Come on, is it, is it, are you with me? You have not been called to be ruled over. You have been called to be the ruler with God. Okay, so now Jesus comes. Please listen. He lives out His ways in obedience to the Father. He's modeling something. He does not come as a second Adam. He comes as the last Adam and the final Adam. And He dies a life in obedience to God, the Father. He lives and He dies obediently to the Father. And because He's the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, His blood then gets shed for the remission of everything from Adam all the way up to Jesus and forevermore. Now, anybody and everybody that comes to the Father based on Jesus, 
Jesus' blood then washes us clean from the inside out and you and I cannot, listen, this is why we need Jesus and this is why you need to worship Him because if He did not come, none of us could ever again have the Holy Spirit. Because somebody's blood needed to be shed so that a people could be clean again so that a Holy Spirit can live inside of a holy people. That's why holy blood was shed. You and I are now temples of the Most High God. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 18. 1 Corinthians 6 speaks onwards about this, 6 or 19 to 20. And it says that Jesus Christ comes now and He lives inside of you by His Spirit. But Jesus is not living inside of you. It is the Spirit of the Lord that lives inside of you. Are you there? You are a physical temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives and He dwells in you. Come on guys, are you with me? If you want to, and, and I want to explain it maybe in a kingdom mindset that you'll understand this. If a, a kingdom wants to set up rulership over any other kingdom, it has to send an ambassador into that kingdom. For example, if the United Kingdom or any other of France or Spain or any of these countries, if they wanted to invade a country, they will send an ambassador. The ambassador, listen carefully, the ambassador is one that comes from the kingdom or comes from the headquarters and they are not part of the country, but they are tasked to set up that that country looks like the country where they come from. In other words, the ambassador's task is to train a group of citizens to become like the country they come from. That ambassador then takes certain things to, to, to party. They put in rules and legislation and language. And they start to shift a people towards the culture, the rules and the legislation of the original country. Is everybody with me? That's why, for example, when England would have conquered, or back in the, the day before they got their independence, but with, with England, for example, over Barbados or Trinidad or Jamaica or any of these places, you'll find that there is a culture, and it's not their own culture, they've received the culture from the headquarters. Now they've changed over time and they're becoming their own culture. Are you, do you understand? So for any nation to be conquered, an ambassador had to come. Now, let's take it scriptural. You and I, before you and I could become ambassadors, an ambassador had to come. Somebody had to be deployed from the Godhead to model a way in which we should live. And so, who came? Jesus Christ came as the King. He didn't come as a prince, He came as a King. And he sets himself up on the earth as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Why? The earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. The earth does not belong to government. It belongs to the Lord. That's why the Bible says that on his shoulders will rest a government and unto this government there will be no end. That's why your hope is not in a physical government. Your hope is in the government of God to which you belong. Now, of course, I'm a, I'm a member of this, or I'm a citizen of this country, but I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. And because I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God, I have got rights. And because I've got rights, there is somebody that teaches me my rights. His name is the Holy Spirit. Because He reminds me of the legislation that I belong to. This book of legislation tells me, for an example, that by His stripes I am healed. This book tells me that poverty is not for me. This book tells me that if the enemy attacks me, I can take it back seven times. This book tells me I'm the head and not the tail. It's legislation. It's not negotiation. We cannot negotiate what the Father has legislated. I'll say that again. You cannot negotiate your freedom. You cannot negotiate that what the Father has brought into legislation. 
the father which was the one that saint jesus brought in legislation that legislation is written in the blood it cannot be changed it cannot be altered and it will shift for no man why the son gave it the son wrote it the son finished it that's why the scripture says in the book of colossians all things rulers powers dominion principalities all things is because he is and all things are held together because he is so your and my task is a simple one we have to not want to go to heaven but to bring heaven here i'm going to say one or two things that might shock people and it's okay heaven is not the goal for you i'll stand still what do you think heaven is not the goal if it were the day you got saved you'll be gone what is the goal is to restore the kingdom to you heaven is a byproduct of the kingdom being restored it's not the goal by the way where our loved ones is right now if you've lost somebody they are in heaven but heaven as it is right now is a temporary place even. how do we know because he says i will create a new heaven and a new earth are you there so heaven is a temporary place set up for in the body with the lord out the body with the lord the point is i don't want to the point is not that doctrine to teach that today the doc the, the the point of what i want you to get is that it is not our task to try just to get to heaven the task is rather father let your kingdom come let your will be done as it is in heaven let it be so on the earth why as it is in heaven because heaven is under the governance of god but God, which are controlling heaven and everything is under His control there. That's maybe why we need to go and want to go. But heaven is a model for what the Father wants here. Through who does He want it here? Through you. That's why the devil is such a liar. So he understands he will never again be in heaven he understands listen to me carefully he understands i want you to catch the spiritual world he understands that he will never access heaven again he's been casted out so what does he do he sets up a government on a temporary ball of clay And he puts this he, around the earth because right now you are sitting in the first heaven. There's three heavens. The second heaven is the heavens around us. The third heaven is where God is. So he sets up his whole kingdom around the second, uh, uh, in the second heaven. Why? He wants to control the first one. But I, I want you to imagine it. Now somebody of a higher rank comes. Descends from the third heaven onto the first heaven in other words the owner comes suddenly the earth which was under the control of the god of this age becomes afraid because he knows that somewhere the king has to be born that's why he's looking to and fro where is this king gonna come got no idea where the king is going to come therefore he tries to kill everybody zero to two why he hopes that he's annihilating the king are you there then suddenly he obviously misses it for the first two years then 28 years later after his first attempt one comes onto the scene the father speaks please note this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased he speaks out of the third realm into the first realm and suddenly the devil which is in the second realm appears in the first realm and says, oh, now I know who you are. Then, of course, think about that. All of how, how to oppose the son because they're trying to stop him in his task. 
they unsure why easier yet they have some idea because the prince of this world is offering up or giving to the enemy or giving to Jesus sorry giving to Jesus he says if you bow down and worship me I'll give it to you what I'll give you back the earth I'll give you back the kingdoms how did he get the kingdoms from Adam so he says listen you don't need to do what I because scripture further indicates that he, he wasn't fully in the picture here because otherwise Jesus wouldn't be crucified right okay so he says I'll give the kingdoms back Jesus says no I'm not going to take it back like that we're not going to do it this way I'm not going to bow down and worship you then Jesus goes on with his life I'm trying to provoke you this morning to understand who you are Jesus goes on with his life he lives out his life in three and a half years that's quick three and a half years in obedience of father task done three and a half years he lived his life with all of hell of course against him but now how does the devil work against him please see this the devil not only tries to attack him personally he attacks Jesus through the religious people why through the religious people because religion will set you up for rules and legislation where the kingdom sets you up for citizenship the kingdom is not about a, a list of do's and don'ts the kingdom is about do you have the son and if you have the son that is all that this kingdom wants because he represents a whole book of legislation but it's not through sweat and through the law it's through love mercy grace and peace <laughs> oh come on shout out to God I'm preaching good So then Jesus lives out his life in obedience to the Father. Then Jesus hangs upon the cross. All of hell is thinking, ah, oh, we got it. The owner is busy dying. No, the owner is modeling what is to come. He breathes up the Spirit of the Lord. They put him into a grave. And there he descends. Where is he going? He's going to the one that has the keys. He takes the keys of hell, hades, and the grave. He takes it. Why? He's the owner. And the only way that he could legally take it back is to die a sinless death. Now he takes the keys. He walks over in paradise. He locks open. He sets the captives free. He says, come. He descends to the Father. He places all those that believed in Him in front of the Father. He descends to His disciples. Are you guys are still with me? He tells His disciples, go wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Wait. Then the Bible says, Jesus goes and I'm fast forwarding a lot now he sits down at the right hand of power where he still is now 120 clay pots or men are gathered in an upper room what was the Lord's first model let's go back in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth let us make man in our image and in our likeness he places his spirit in Adam. Adam loses the spirit or the spirit gets recalled because Adam sins. At last Adam comes, he models a way of perfection. Now by his price and by his blood, whosoever believes in him can be washed from the inside out and can receive the one that the original Adam had. That's why he says receive. That's why he says repent. Oh, are you guys okay? Then 120 men in an upper room, they waited. Why? Jesus said so. Then suddenly the Bible says tongues of fire appeared on each and every one of them. What happens? 
the Spirit of the Lord descends on whose command? The Father's. Based on who? Jesus. And 120 men get filled with the Holy Spirit. Now the enemy has got a problem. Because he had to contend with one man filled with the Spirit. May I recall you all and remind you all, one man had so much authority that the Roman Senate thought he was about to take over. One guy. His name is Jesus, our Lord. Jesus had so much authority that the Roman Senate spied him out. They wondered, is he going to take over? Come on guys, are you with me? Yes, there's a thousand plus people here this morning full of the Holy Spirit. We've got no reason not to be a force on the planet. The only reason why we are not a force on the planet is because somebody is lying to you and somebody is believing that lie and therefore we are living less than our potential. I'm here to remind you today that if the Spirit of the Lord lives inside of you, if the Spirit of God is inside of you, then listen, you, I am anointed to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to raise the dead. The Bible says, Jesus Christ quotes it Himself. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me. To do what? To set the captives free. You are not a captive, you are a son. You are not a slave, you are a son. You're a son and daughter, church. Come on, hear me this morning. You are not slaves, you are sons. Prince Charles, a while back before the queen died, he could not become king unless the queen went. Right? It's true. Because if she's alive, he's of lesser power. He can be old, doesn't mean he's got power. Because his mom is still alive. That's right. That's right. can outvious, but his mom is still alive. Easy. Prince Charles could not become king because the queen was still present. Come on, guys. So a mom dies, a prince becomes a king. In our kingdom, it doesn't work like that. Because our king never dies. So what does he do? He says, I'm the king of kings. Who is he referring to? He's referring to kings. If I walk into Germany, you speak German. You walk into Chinese, China, you speak Chinese. Speak, go into France, you speak French. Go into Italy, you speak Italian. Right? So the country gives you a language. Let me reverse it. The language determines the country. Stick with me. We, as you walk into another country and you hear a language, you know you're in a different country. Are you with me? So the language shifts the culture. The language determines the country. Because I can't be in, in German, in Germany, and everybody's talking French. I can't be in Italy and everybody's speaking Afrikaans. The language determines the country and the country shows you the language. Everybody, do you understand what I'm saying? As soon as the language is determined, a culture will come out of that language. In South Africa, we've got 11 languages. Each language has got a specific way of doing stuff. Right? And how do you know somebody belongs to your culture? They have to speak the same language. If they don't talk like you, they are not from your culture. The Christian has been given a language. How do I know? He plays a spirit inside of all of you. The Holy Spirit. And He gave you the ability to speak in tongues. 
So you have a native language to you that makes all of you and me as well. It makes us part of the culture of the kingdom of God. So whenever you hear, listen to me carefully, this language spoken of the Spirit, you know that there's a country there. Now what the enemy has gotten right, please listen to me, he made country citizens speak like the country that they don't belong to. So when Christians gossip, slander, backbite, be negative, they're speaking like a foreign country. Does fear not knock on all of our doors? Of course it does. But send Jesus to answer. Do we not all feel betrayed and offended at times? Of course you do. You're human. You're a human being. But you cannot lower to that standard of living. If you do, you've switched kingdoms by language. You have to become and be according to your original design. Come on, are you guys okay? I'm preaching this different than the second half. That's okay. The point is that, I, that you need to catch here this morning is without the Spirit, you can do nothing. You cannot fulfill the task. You cannot fulfill the assignment. You cannot wake up without the Holy Spirit. Because He's, he's in you, the breath of life. Think about this for a moment. I want to take you just there for three seconds. How arrogant is it of man who has the breath of the one they come from and yet they close their hearts off against him? That's arrogance. Because he can at any time take that breath, but he doesn't. He's merciful. He's gracious. He's long-suffering. He's compassionate. He wants them to choose him. Again, I say, and I'll close with this. The Father has sent the Son. The Son sent the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord draws you to the Son. It is the Son that brings you to the Father. So, here's the question. How do we know when we are insensitive in this realm? It's quite simple. You become... Unconscious, you not unconscious, you become you become dull here of him pulling you here. In other words, you stay stuck in sin here. And you don't get pulled there. Let me maybe say it like this. I, I understand God's plan here. Salvation is the first step. To change you to become like Jesus, that's the second step. We are not just called to save people. We are called to deliver people. Heal people. Restore people. That they may change into the image of Jesus. Come on in power, are you with me? And so this morning as you sit here, you come from the last Adam, not the first. Yeah, your earthly suit, you come from the last, oh, the first, I understand. But according to the Spirit, you belong to the last one. Worship team, come back. And so, I want us to understand this morning. It's not, yes, see, and thank be to God. It's not Jesus that forgives you. Jesus cannot forgive you. The Father forgives you. I'll say that again. The Father forgives you based on Jesus. Are you there? So who do you pray to in Power Church? You don't pray to Jesus. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. So you say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, I need your help. Who's the help? The Spirit. I want to give you hope here this morning. The Father is rich in love. He's rich in mercy. 
The Bible records in Ephesians 2 verse number 4 to 6, it says, As for God that was rich in love, because of His great mercy, had grace on us. So you don't need to petition Him long, even though you need to pray at all times, at all occasions, the Bible says. The only thing you need to do is you need to access Him through Him. Because this is how it works. Father, I need your help in the name of Jesus. The only thing the Father is looking for, are you praying through the right way? Or are you coming to Him through Him? Because if you cannot sidestep Jesus. You have to go through Him. Then the Father, the Jesus says, Father, this one is part of us. Then the Father sends the answer through the Son, by the Holy Spirit, and you receive the solution. Last, last thought that I want you to understand. You are a kingdom citizen. And because you are a kingdom citizen, this kingdom that we belong to has got an army. This army is the angels. The angels <laughs> are instructed by the Father to protect the citizens. They do the Father's bidding. Come on guys, are you okay? May I be as bold as to say this? You cannot fail unless you decide so. Because Christ just makes overcomer. It's true. Oh, come on, church. Are you guys okay? So where's our eyes? Why do we worship? Why do we worship Him? Because if He didn't do it, none of us will receive eternal life. So don't come to church late. Just when I preach. Because I might switch it around. And I'll preach first. And then you come here and you have to worship for 50 minutes. Come on guys. I see some of you sneaking late. God bless you if you did. I won't tell the people. But you don't go late to your work. You don't come there by... You 8 o'clock, your work starts. You don't come there 20 to 9. We don't. Because you'll get fired. Can't tell your boss, hey, sorry, slept a little bit late. So why do we dishonor God? No, be on time. Come, I love you. I'm telling you the truth. I know for some of you, it feels like, yeah, we worship forever in this place. Hey, we're modeling something. One day we're going to be in heaven. And the angel is going to say to you, here comes the king. And you're going to suddenly feel power come. Then it's him, he's walking. How do you think you're going to respond? I promise you, you're going to hit the ground. You're going to worship him. Therefore, get worship right on earth. Here on earth, let's get it right. So that we... <laughs> So that one day in heaven, you don't need to stand for 10,000 years and the angel tells you, put up your hand, put it down. Put it up, put it down. Put it up, put it down. I see some of you guys worship. You worship God like this. No, don't worship God like that. He didn't die for you like that. He died for you like this. Don't worship the Lord like this. You're not a speed cop. Worship God like that. Come on, go the extra mile. Are you guys with me? Come on, is there somebody with me this morning? Don't just sit. No, dance before the Lord. Show some power. Show some vision. So show some praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Because church, if we don't, the rocks will cry out. 
It's true. Are you guys there? Bump your neighbors, say he's talking about you. You were late. <laughs> I'm teasing. I love you very much, but we need to get worship right. We need to love the Lord extravagantly. Because this King of ours, He died naked, ashamed. <laughs> for who? For you. So for whosoever believes in Him will never perish, but shall receive eternal life. Whosoever believes in Him shall never perish. And I'm here to tell you finally as a witness, no height, no depth, no angel, no demon, no principality, no power, nothing but nothing but nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus. Nobody, not one devil. I'm telling you, there's somebody stronger. His name is Jesus. There's a love because where can you go? Come on church, give Jesus a shout of praise. Where can you go? Where can you go in your spirit and his spirit can't find you? David says, I'll go down to the pit of Sheol. His spirit still comes there. Are you there? So be who you are. You are a citizen. And I'll end of this. What's this step on before I take the new members? Listen to me. Jesus walks in. There's a lady. She's back for 18 years. Who looks the lady, he does it in the synagogue. Can I tell you, if Jesus was on the planet physically, he'll be flipping tables in places. Yeah. Jesus comes in, he looks at a woman, 18 years bow. Religious people could not free her. They are quoting the right scriptures, but they are not freeing her. Why? They are quoting something. They're not living. Jesus comes. He sees her. This is how I imagine it. He asks the question, is this daughter not a daughter of Abraham? In other words, please note, he's not asking how much she prayed, even though you must pray. He's asking, does this daughter not have rights? And he sees, ah, but she's got rights. What is the rights that she has? She is a daughter of Abraham. And God promised Abraham through the covenant of faith that sickness is not part of the deal. So Jesus, which is God, ah, oh, come on. He goes all the way there. He says, is this not a daughter? Is this girl not a daughter of this man that we have a covenant with? And he reminds himself and he straightens her out and he chases the devil out. Why? The devil wasn't there when the covenant was made. Oh, come on. There's a covenant that Jesus cut with you. Let me go one, de one deeper. Can I go one deeper quickly? I'll just show you something here. Yes, I love the Bible. Do you love the Bible? I want to show you something. Father, we thank you for your word. I'll do it quick. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this. Let me find it quickly. The word Gad is one of the sons of Jacob that came through Leah. The word Gad means favor favor of God. Jesus goes to the gatherings to do what? To find one man. To restore what? The favor of God. Look at this Jesus that we serve. He remembers not what was said before. And he goes, looks for those that he's made covenant with. As you sit here this morning, take this now to the bank. You had a mom or a great-grandmom or a father or a great-grandfather 
that prayed. I'm telling you, even if they're in the grave, God was still answering their prayers. <laughs> it's true. Oh, come on. Say thank you, Jesus, that somebody prayed for me. Because most of us are a result of somebody that prayed. But, but the point is that I want to make, and I'll leave you with this this morning. The point is that I would make is you are a result of a God that's faithful. Not a people that are faithful, a God that is faithful. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Never, never, never. Never, ever, ever. It will never happen. Come on, give Jesus some praise. Come on, empower.